Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask and Kick. Today we have some exciting news coming from the folks at Blender Foundation and it is the fact that the folks at Intel have now signed up as corporate patrons for the Blender Development Fund. This marks them as the most recent members for the Blender Development Fund. And of course, yes, I do know most of you guys will be saying, has Intel never signed up to this? They have. They have actually been on the giving tier, but right now they're leveling up to the top tier. Intel has supported Blender in various sense from finances to development, hardware, and also code contribution. You can also see right here that Intel is expanding its collaboration and commitments to the Blender open source community. And the folks at Intel are already saying that we are already incorporating the one API cross architecture, CPU and GPU driven feature and performance of Intel One API Rendering Toolkit Library into Blender to benefit its creators of all kinds. So this in its sense is very, very beautiful. Now with Intel signing up as Patreon, Blender now has a top level support from all CPU and GPU manufacturers. Now, if you go over to the Patreon page, you would also see that Intel is now playing with the big boys, you know, Epic, Unity, Amazon Web Service, Decentraland, Nvidia, AMD, and also Facebook. So where was Intel before? Now, if we actually use the Wayback Machine and go all the way back to 17th of December 2021, you would see that Intel was right here as corporate gold members. But you know, with all of the services and things they've offered to the folks at Blender for the development of cycles and also some more features, it actually ends them a spot here. I mean, even if they're not financing Blender. So what have they done up to this point? The folks at Intel has added faster performance to cycles for CPU rendering, and they've also contributed to the development of cycles from patches to code development and hardware plus software resource allocation. Now, some of these things are built behind the scene. It also makes sense that Intel contribution, both financially, personal, and also resource wise has pushed most blending rendering performances and features to what we have come to see and love. Now from rasterization to fixing bottlenecks while rendering optimization of curved hair segments and triangular sections all the way to bounding volume hierarchy, open image denoiser and also Embry. So for those who are just coming into Blender, open image denoiser wasn't something that was there. At the point that this was implemented, this was existing as something that you get to work within the compositor to get. So if you'd like to read more about the Intel open image denoiser, I'm going to put this link in the description where you can check it. So how this worked at that time was a little bit different. So if we have a simple scene here and let's say we scale this all the way up and I select this and move this all the way to this point. Let's just simply go in to where we have our materials and change this material all the way to glass, you know, because it makes sense. Tap zero on the keyboard to switch over to the camera, tap N on the keyboard and go over to view and lock and load. So the next thing which we need to do is switch over to cycles and these features were not there. At the time of 2.81, those were not the features that you get to work with. You had to hit your render and get your render like this. So for the most part, you just had to play with the samples and tweak all those tiny rivets and buttons just to get the right results happening for your render. But right now we can cancel this render at this point. All right. And once we do, let's close this and open up a new section. We can now go over to the compositor, click on use nodes, stretch this all the way out and make sure that once you have your render, you need to include this, the noise in data. All right. This is very, very essential. So let's just go ahead and hit that render one more time. Just hit this render. And at this point, let's just get one, two, and we're just going to cancel that. So once we cancel this, we can always click to refresh that. So before now, this was what we had. If you go over to your render layer within your compositor and making sure that you have used node turned on. You can go over to add, search and type in the word the noise. So this the noise, literally the noise is what you have. So what we have to do is click on the normals and connect the normal albedo to albedo. And there you have it. We can turn on the backdrop if we would like to, you know, have this visible within the backdrop. And to actually see this, we can go over to the viewer, click to have that viewer, click image, connect the image. And that way you'll be able to see this within your compositor. Now, for those who would also want to see what the rendering will look like, you can also do that by simply going over here, switch this over to the image editor, click right here, change this to render result. And yes, you will be getting the render results that you have. So at this point, you can turn this anyhow you want and then hit the render, render the image that you want, you know, yeah, we want to render like this, but we don't want to spend all this time, you know, cancel that. And then once you go back here, you can click and select, and this is going to automatically update. Of course, you can also get an update right here. So this was basically how these things 
we are done. But a good thing that, you know, Intel came to the rescue, made sure that everything looks cool with open image to noiser. And now in tools like 3.0, you don't even need to do all of that. So in 3.0 right now, you have a much more upgraded open image to noiser. And at this point, you're having all the details preserved and even way more cooler things that you can work with. So you can actually see Intel doing the Intel kind of thing. Now, despite this, you also have the Intel Denoiser baked directly into Blender. So let's also go ahead and join this and also choose to join this. So you know how once you go over to your render, or let's say you're setting up your render and you hit your render button, you have to wait for this thing to finish. So at this point, you don't even need to do that anymore. OK, so you can just simply have this object selected, go over to the render section, go all the way down and since we would like to have our render we can now choose not to use the sample but the limit so we can say you know once this gets to two seconds just stop and that is what you can get so i'm just going to move this to a point like so so that it doesn't look like we're using the same angle okay so i can set that go over to render hit the render image and wait for two seconds and after two seconds this is going to get us that image and the noise it and of course this isn't something that was remotely possible before now so it is actually something to be very, very happy about to see that Cycles is pushing forward. Some other improvements that the folks at Intel has also brought into Blender is Embraer. So we probably don't know, but Embraer is for motion blur and motion blur in its sense, just like shadows, actually help make your scene come to life. So the motion blur is essential for realistic rendering, but it comes at the price of rendering. And now Embraer from Intel is making it even 10 times faster. So there's a couple of reads for those who like to read this, just in case you have no idea. But this is actually something that the folks at Intel has implemented. And this in itself made sense. So we got to see the noise in, in 2.81. And then in 2.9, Intel Embraer showed up and this looks cool. And we also got to see the open image noiser for both the viewport and also the renderer come over to 2.9. So Blender 2.8 introduced the open image denoiser by the compositor and 2.9 also came with a denoiser for interactive 3D viewport performance. And so this is something that is very, very impressive. And just like I mentioned before, the things that we've come to love and like and actually work with every day is a product of what the folks at Blender Foundation alongside Intel has been working together to create for users to take advantage of. At the same time, there's also a lot of things to talk about NVIDIA and AMD as well, but Intel is doing their own beat to make sure that once you're working in cycles, you can get the best performance for your CPU and essentially, or soon enough, we will be getting a better performance for GPU. So for those who would like to read more about this, maybe you want to see the whole initiative such as the Embraer, the open image, the noiser to accelerate CPU for creative processes, or maybe you might want to also come through and read up on the open image, the noiser itself, or read up on the Embraer. You can go over to the link in the description and check these things out for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And just before we go, the folks that actually purchased the photogrammetry course, it is now on sale. So you can actually go ahead and grab it. So we made an announcement earlier that this was in pre-sale right now it's available and the price is still within $59 for early birds and you can actually go ahead and grab it right now. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until I see you guys in the next one peace.